In this video, I will show you the Adobe Photoshop Generative Expand AI tools. Let's get started. So here I am in Adobe Photoshop. Now this is the current full version of Adobe Photoshop that's installed on my computer. At the end of this video, I will show you the beta version of Adobe Photoshop that has even better and more powerful AI generative expand features. But let's start here in the full current version of Photoshop. Now, if you've been intimidated in the past with Adobe Photoshop, maybe you've been frustrated by all of the many options that you have, all of the tools, maybe you don't know where to start when you use Photoshop, you can set all of those concerns aside for now because Adobe Photoshop has never been so user-friendly and so powerful even for people that are very beginners just starting out using the tool. So here I am on the Photoshop homepage and I'm just gonna go up here and click File, Open. And this has opened a window that I can use to browse my computer. I'm gonna click here on Downloads and I have some images that I want to use as examples in this video and I want to give you several examples so that you really get a feel for how this works and we're gonna start with this image here a man standing next to a recycle bin all right so I just opened this image Adobe Photoshop is going to pull it in and it's going to present it to me so that I can make changes there it is now this image is a square image there are many images that I would like to use in my PowerPoint slides or in my documents but I often need them to be widescreen images and not square images so let's look at how we can use generative expand in Photoshop to turn square images into more widescreen type images you'll notice that I have these hand that have appeared around the image. Sometimes you'll see those and sometimes you won't. If you ever don't see those handles around the edges, all you need to do is tap the C button on the keyboard and they will appear. And I'm just gonna hold the C button to make sure that they stay. C stands for crop and you can also get those handles to appear just by clicking here on the toolbar. Just go right here and click and now the handles will stay until you click away from the crop tool. Okay, so with the handles visible, I'm just going to click and drag to expand this image out. And it's going to give me some white space. So I've got white space on the left and right. I may also want some more space above this man that's standing there, maybe a little bit below as well. And I'm actually going to make it even more wide than I did before. So there we go. That's what I want. I want this image to be bigger than it is and to expand in the way that I've lined out here. All I have to do to make this happen is go down here to this prompt, this text box, I guess you could call it, where you can type in things. But in this case, I'm not going to type. I'm just going to click Generate, and Adobe Photoshop is going to go to work, seeing if it can expand this image the way I want it to. This uses artificial intelligence to look at the image as it currently is, and then to just figure out what should go around the current image. It's almost done generating the expanded image. And there we have the results, my newly expanded image. So you can see this better. I'm going to click here to hide this panel or minimize it. And you can see the full AI expanded image. It's not perfect, but I love the results. Now, if you look down here, you'll see that this is just option one. If I click this arrow, I get a second option. In some ways, I like that better. I could click here to get a third option. And that's my least favorite. Now, just so you know, each of these variations adds to the file size of your image that you're working in. So if you want to reduce the file size, you can click here on the variations that you don't want to keep. Click on these three dots, delete the variation. That reduces the file size. I'm going to go and delete the first option as well. So I just have the one I want to keep and use. Now, I could continue to work on this image in Photoshop, but if I'm happy with the results here, I might be completely done with this image and ready to use it in a presentation or in a document or whatever it might be. So I'm going to go up here to File, and I'm just going to choose Export, Quick Export as PNG. And in my case, I'm just going to export it to my Downloads folder. I could change the name if I want to. Maybe I'll just put in Dash Expanded, click Save. And now in my Downloads folder, there it is the image that I expanded from a square image into a full widescreen image. Now let's try a couple of other options. I'm going to go to File, Open to do another example. So I'm going to open the Cottage image. And if you want to try this along with me, look in the description below the video and you'll find a link to the practice files. So here we have an AI generated image of a cottage and I really like the results, but the AI generator that made it didn't necessarily have an option for a widescreen image. It just wants to produce a square. Now this is more 
of an artistic look. It doesn't necessarily look like a photo. It's more of artwork, but it still should work in Adobe Photoshop. Once again, I'm going to use the handles here. If you don't see the handles, just tap C and they should appear. But I'll just expand the edges of this painting or this image. And then I'll just click generate. And pretty quickly, I have my AI generatively expanded image. These added parts of the image look like they were just meant to go with the rest of the image. Every once in a while, that won't be the case. And that's why you have alternatives. Once again, I can click through the alternatives to pick the one that is my favorite. And I think I like the first one the best. So once again, I should delete the variations that I don't want to keep, especially if I'm worried about the file size. And again, I can go to file, export, quick export as PNG. Now, what if instead of just expanding this image with just a generic, you know, click generate. What if I want to be specific about what gets generated? Okay, so I'm going to try it again, but this time I'm just going to expand it to the left. And instead of clicking generate right away, I'm going to type in here what I want added. I would like a cow added here at the left. I click generate and Photoshop is still going to fill in some of the details that will match right in with the edge of this image but it's also gonna put a cow there, okay? So it's trying to make it fit the artistic style and the background. Once again, I can click through the different options. I think I like option three the best, so I can delete the other two if I want to. So I want to show one more example, but for this example, I'm gonna use the new Photoshop beta. This came out in June, I believe, of 2024. If you're watching this in 2025 or later in 2024, there may be a newer version that has even better AI features. But here is the Photoshop beta that's available in June of 2024. And notice one of the changes is now they have what they call Generate Background. Pretty similar, I think, to Generative Expand, at least in some ways. But I'm going to X out of this and open up a new example. I'll go to File, Open, and I'll choose on my computer. I'll go back into my Photoshop examples and I'm going to open up in this case what I call square Pegasus. I've got this wonderful image of a Pegasus, but it's square. I created this with Microsoft Bing's AI image generator and I really like the results, but I just wish it had different dimensions, a different shape to it. Notice that I don't have the handles that I need to crop this image. So I'll just hold the C key on the keyboard. Now the handles appear and I can click and drag just like I showed before. But now let's see it in the new Photoshop beta. Now that I've dragged out those handles to the dimensions I want it to be, I can just click Generative Expand, and I'll click here on Generate. Because I'm using the beta version, I need to agree and opt in to that question, and I get my results. Now, I got the results quicker this time in the beta version. I don't know if that's a coincidence or if it's because they've sped it up in the beta. One of the new features that I see here is that you can upload a reference image. So I could choose another image. Let's say the one of the man standing next to the recycle bin, and I'm I'm going to confirm that and then click generate and let's see how that changes the results. So you can see because I used that as a reference image, it kind of combined the two images in a way, but not exactly, not straight across. It used the image that I uploaded as a reference and created something similar and yet still incorporated the Pegasus. Kind of interesting. So in this video, I showed you three different examples of generative expand. Two in the current modern version of Adobe Photoshop and one in the beta version. If you found this video to be helpful, watch for future videos in which I'll show generative fill and remove and other options like removing a background out of an image using AI. But for now, I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do that by becoming a channel member. That's the best. But you could also support me by clicking the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.